Greetings and welcome to another Stompy 51 miniature adventure. Today we're going to have a look at a few things on my kind of hobby table, but most particularly this Orc Boss in Mega Armor, which I painted earlier this week. And do forgive me, my trespassers, but largely my puerile little double entendres. So I tried to keep this simple because I couldn't be bothered really to spend more than a couple of hours, I think it was three hours all in probably, on it. And so it was undercoated Mephist on red, washed with um, Army Painter Strong Tone, I think mixed with Null Oil. I normally take it and then mix it with something fun like a bit of uh, Games Workshop red uh, wash or um, a Games Workshop brown wash just to vary it a little bit. Not that I'm professional enough to see any real difference. And then once that dried, I just added a bit of yellow to the Mephiston red, gave it a bit of a dry brush, uh, which gave it some, you know, with, you know with removing a lot of the paint, and then mixing a bit more yellow into the Mephiston red concoction um, to um, give a bit more edge highlighting. And then I took some packaging material with a bit of flesh color, dabbed it on the places where I thought it would go clunk, because I don't think that the uh, Orcs have great armor maintenance facilities. And then I took some Rhinox Hide over the sharper brush and kind of just dabbed, you know, just touched the edges and any interesting bit uh, revealed, any interesting shapes uh, revealed by the, uh, the flesh color dabbing in a way that I'd kind of seen on various YouTube videos. And then I basically followed the uh, Games Workshop cover uh, art because I think was it Uncle Adam said, you know, if you're too lazy to come up with an interesting painting scheme yourself, you know, there are artists who sit there going through different concept options uh, in Games Workshop. And so if you follow what they're doing, it's been thought through quite carefully in terms of spot colors, main colors, what works. And, uh, and so I basically followed theirs, except their armor was black. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just make it red because I happen to have a can of Mephiston red and you know, might as well use it before it all kind of dries up and starts getting all furry when you spray. And then as spot colors, I thought white would be the way. The metal, um, I think I have an AK uh, dark metal, which is very good. And that's what I used to paint the, the guns um, and then use, I think, one, a, a, a medium level kind of uh, metal by Games Workshop for all the other met metallic kind of bits and bolts. And one of the bronze colors by Games Workshop for the exhaust. And then I just took some packaging material after I'd washed it um, and just dabbed all the bits which I thought uh, would kind of get oily and mucky over time. I lost interest when I got to the fist and uh, because it looked a bit too fiddly to paint in a kind of 1980s glyph orcs here we go kind of approach and so I just um, washed it with nihil oxide the kind of the oxidizing effect Games Workshop sells for bronze and gold kind of colors and that came out quite well I thought actually I took my finger and just mucked it all in it's very hard with um, modern games workshop kits to really put your own stamp on it because they can only be assembled in one way. Uh, well, I tell a lie, they give you sometimes one or two options, not this one model, um, but they only give you one or two or three options. They're normally like a sort of a change of head, but you know, I'm sure in the old days, it was easier to just get other conversion bits and certainly now with 3D printed bits and do some interesting stuff, but you can't really because the, the al some kind of computer algorithm divides up how to assemble the miniatures in ways that a human mind couldn't possibly think through. You know, chat GPT and the rise of AI has long happened in Games Workshop. And uh, I think I had someone on, um, was it Peachy's painting phase who kind of explained why that is. And that's basically their target audience isn't old codgers like me. It's largely boys, girls that they can get them between 11 and 14. We're gonna get into the hobby for a short time on their parents' wallet, and they don't want to have 10 different ways of assembling a miniature with scope for um, using your bits box, because they don't have a bits box. They just want a kind of kit to go away with 
um, have a bit of a go with badly, no doubt, because you know they haven't got the years to build up experience unless they're just a natural talent, and the games workshop has made their money. But you know, it's a business, I respect that. Anyway, um, and then the, uh, although I did manage to personalize it a bit with this uh, Mohican for the little gobbo fella, which comes from a Warhammer Fantasy Orc Chariot bit, which I had sort of sitting in my bits box for 20 years, and it's finally found its moment. And what a good moment it is. I think it does add a bit of, you know, character to the little gobbo. So he's no longer just a subsidiary uh, adjunct to the big psycho down here. He's got his own little um, swinging 60s uh, wardrobe somewhere um, and hairstylist. Now, this urban camo scheme is something I saw done by, I think, Duncan Rhodes. Um, obviously, he did it well. And I had a bit of a go myself because I thought what would contrast nicely with the bog standard red. And I think I'm quite pleased with how it came out. I mean, the reality is, I won't tell you a lie, I did the white lines and then had to kind of tidy up on either side. But Duncan said that would happen. And then I did, fl I did flirt with the idea of giving the same camo for comedy effect to the little goblin, you know, like a, as a mini me, one million dollars. But I just thought I can't be bothered and my painting skills aren't up to it. And it'll add another sort of 15, 20 minutes, which I can't be bothered to engage with. But it's worked out just fine. And then this uh, is a kind of Mark one or two Terminator armor. Are they called pauldrons? I don't know. Um, shoulder pad. And it's from a 3D printed miniature. Uh, it was a leftover arm. And so I just cut off uh, the lower part of the arm and stuck it over here. And I thought yellow would be a good kind of uh, contrast to the red and metallic colors. And then I just put a bit of blood for the blood god, dabbed a bit of black all over it to show that the marine had come off worse. I mean, they shall show no fear was very sweet until he got eviscerated by some big orky stomper. And his future isn't to stomp around 40k, but actually probably around Xenos Rampant as a single model unit because the game takes a beautifully high-level conceptual view uh, along the lines that what's the difference between being shot at and beaten up by five orcs, one really big orc, and he is a big orc. So I think I would designate him as a single model elite infantry unit, which I suppose is really aimed at kind of space marines, but he is, I mean, he's going to be pretty heavy duty. I'll designate him a commander, because you can designate any unit as a commander. They just give buffs. And you can give uh, your kind of conceptual unit a bit of fluff. Well, it's not fluff, it's, you know, a, a few kind of very uh, small upgrades just to give them a bit of flavour, I guess. And here, I suppose, I'll give him Brutal Leader, which, as you can see, could, could be anything from a commissar who kind of keeps everyone in line to, I suppose, isn't it a standard part of the Orky law that... The big bosses just kind of hoof everybody into line. What else have I been up to hobby-wise? On that adventure forum, someone was selling these um, servitors, which I thought were gorgeous. And so for a reasonable, well, probably a, a reasonable market rate, I picked these up with their various arms and um, I've got one more floating around somewhere. And with them, with that one, there will be a unit of five, probably for Xenos Rampant, in my um, Adeptus Mechanicus kind of themed white death robot army, which you'll have seen carrying itself to victory across a range of largely dead zone games. And from the same person, I picked up these Nurgle demons, which I'd always wanted. I mean, I've never liked Nurgle, but these were quite were quite stylized and cartoonish and old hammery and exactly what I love. And then after I saw eBay Miniature Rescue, 
rescue some of these and do a fantastic and speedy paint job. I think largely on a zenithal approach. I thought I'll have those. And again, in Xenos Rampant, they can um, turn any kind of guard force that I might have into more of a denizens of evil kind of force. And, um, and probably also for any fantasy games I could turn their use to, like maybe Rain and Hell. One day I'll do a, a video of all the um, metal demons I've been collecting for about 20 years, none of which um, have been painted. But that's one for another day. For now, please do like, comment and subscribe, show a bit of love, leave any comments that you like, by the way. I love responding to them slowly in the course of the week. They don't need to be constructive. If you want to tell me how to paint better, I'm really open to that. So do let me know. Keep well, keep safe and see you soon.